Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or perhaps even good evening. However I find you today, I hope I find you full in body, full in belly, and hopefully in the next few minutes, full in spirit as well. Uh, my name is Rafaro. For those of you guys who don't know me, I am our student pastor here at our central location. And it's with my absolute joy and privilege that I get to bring the word of God for, for today, which is super exciting. We've been journeying through Proverbs, as you guys know, and today we're looking at Proverbs 26, uh, which is all about the nature of fools and lazy men, as I've come to understand it. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Uh, but before we get into it, I kind of want to work with the definition of what a proverb is, um, that I've come to understand it and will possibly help us out today. So I understand a proverb to be divinely inspired truth or knowledge. And the purpose of any truth or knowledge is to get us somewhere. It is, it is a vehicle because wisdom is the application of knowledge. So we get to wisdom by understanding and knowing something and then applying it. All right. So that's my working definition of um, a proverb and then use of a proverb by applying it to get to wisdom. Cool. So I'm mainly going to be reading uh, Proverbs verse, sorry, Proverbs 26 verse 7. But I would strongly encourage you to kind of read the whole uh, chapter to kind of get the full context. I may dip into verse 9 as well, but we'll, we'll see how we get along. So Proverbs 26 verse 7 says that a proverb in the mouth of a fool is as useful as a paralyzed leg. Wow. Um, that's from the New Living Translation. Some versions say as a lame leg, but we kind of get the picture. So a proverb in the mouth of a fool is as useful as a paralyzed leg. Now, I want to tell you guys a small story about myself, which will hopefully will help us come to understand a bit more about what um, King Solomon was trying to uh, help us to understand here. So I remember when I was very, very young, actually, when I was still learning how to ride a bike, um, I would see my older cousin, him and all of his friends would be down in the park riding and being cool and all of that. And I was like, I need to be there. I have got to be as cool as those guys. And if I need to get on this bike, take off my stabilizers, that's what I'm going to do. So I hadn't fully learned how to ride my bike, but I took off my stabilizers, um, wheeled my bike down to the park. And just when I was at the top of the hill, rolled down using gravity, came in looking cool. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm the guy. I did it, hung out with them for a little bit. And it was a lot of fun. And I was like, come on, I'm making it here. Um, it wasn't a until a little bit later on, unfortunately, um, a rather large dog um, was let loose and it was barreling down the park towards uh, me and me and my cousin and my friends. And somebody shouted, quick boys, get on your bikes, let's go. All of them being very able to ride, hopped on their bikes, shut down the park and they were gone. Me scrambling, trying to kind of negotiate the cogs to work, didn't happen and I accepted my fate. I was like, mum... Dad, I love you. Thank you for all eight years of my life. It's been a pleasure. God bless you. I'll see you in heaven. Uh, I'd accepted my fate. Uh, luckily, the owner did catch the dog in time. And, you know, I was saved from potentially being mauled to death. How tragic would that have been? Um, but yeah, so that, that's a little story about myself. But the reason why I tell that is because um, younger Rafaro there hadn't prepared for riding his bike he wanted to look the part be the part but he didn't want to do the work required to be where where he needed to be and i think sometimes uh whether this is in our spiritual lives whether it's um, a business idea that you have whether it's in a skill that you want to kind of um promote and grow and develop we we want to look the part and so we get the tools we get the equipment we get the the outfit we get the aesthetics we look the part but we haven't done the private preparation needed to, to live into this space. See, when we're looking at our definition of uh, what a proverb is, it is a truth that is applied in order to get us somewhere. So when, when Proverbs 27, 26.7 is saying that proverb in the mouth of a fool is as useful as a paralyzed leg, what it's really saying is that you, you can have all the knowledge in the world, you can have all the equipment, you can look the part as much as you want, but if you, if you don't know how to apply that, if you don't know how to turn knowledge into wisdom, truth into wisdom, if you don't know how to transverse what you, the look into the thing, then you're going to land yourself in trouble. It's about as useful as, as 
paralyzed legs, you're not going to get anywhere. Truth is meant to get us somewhere. But if you only look the part, if we have the appearance of holiness, but are not holy, then we will not bear any fruit. Equally, if you look like, if you portray the characteristic of somebody who is um, doing well in their business, who is, you know, making moves, is always talking about, oh yeah, this thing's happening next month and you don't even, don't even worry about what's happening in the next term, the next quarter is going to be huge for us and you become all about opportunity and fluff and potential, but there's never actually any fruit. And, and that comes from private preparation. And I'd say that's kind of my encouragement for us today audacious church uh, whether you are um, a young person studying whether you are somebody uh, aspiring to fulfill a goal or a dream uh, sporting achievement um, musical achievement or you know even a business idea or even just uh, spend more time with your word and stuff like that if you if you simply look the part but are not willing to do the private work behind doors like a small Rafaro <laughs> who nearly got attacked by a dog, you can land yourself in some sticky situations. In fact, I think it's in verse nine, if we read it there, it actually says um, it can be potentially quite harmful because it's like a thorn in the hand of a drunkard. You, you could land yourself in some very prickly situations, if you'll excuse the pun. So, so this is my encouragement to you guys that knowledge and wisdom is meant to get us somewhere. Um, another analogy, perhaps, if you need it, is if you were to give me a guitar, I could probably play three very out of tune uh, chords for you. And, you know, it's not going to sound great, but I could do it. I could look the part. Somebody was just to walk in and see me from afar, they'd be like, oh, Rafar, Rafar is a good musician. But give that same guitar into the hands of somebody like Sam Allen, who has done the private preparation, private preparation, sorry, who has done the work, who has not just stayed at, you know, knowing the truth and knowing the knowledge that, oh, if I struck this um, string at this way on this upbeat and downbeat, I don't know musical jargon, I don't know, uh, it's going to produce this sound. So I can have the look and the appeal, but somebody who has done the private preparation, somebody who's done the work, somebody who's applied the truth to become wisdom will get further than I will. So that's my encouragement to you guys, that proverbs are truth that require wisdom to apply properly. So... My prayer for you, and I'm going to pray for you in a second, is that uh, you would become wise to utilize the truths, the opportunities, the talents and the gifts that God has given you because you, you don't get from here to there without applying it. God has given us everything that we need to succeed. God has given us um, all, the, all the wisdom and opportunities that are, required, that are afforded to us, but it's up to you and I to apply them. And the Bible says, you know, to whom little can be trusted, more will be added. So this is a biblical principle. So thank you for sharing, uh, sorry, sitting with me this morning. I'm just going to pray for you very quickly. Heavenly Father, God, I want to thank you for every person who is watching and listening right now who has um, a goal, a dream, a vision, a desire to know more of your word, a desire to be a man or a woman of God, of, of, of valor, of, of you know, anointing, Father God. God, I want to thank you that your opportunities are fresh and new every day. And all around us, you're always creating opportunities to be fruitful. But God, I pray, would we not have the appearance of holiness? Would we not have the aesthetics? Would we not just have the equipment, the tools, the look of success, of fruitfulness? But Father God, I pray, would you help us to apply that? Would you help us not to uh, chase accolades or chase clout? But God, I pray, would you give us the long-sightedness in our spirits to do the work that is required behind closed doors to do the stuff that is thankless that nobody sees father god in order to come into a season of glory down the line so lord i thank you for everybody who's watching right now everybody who's listening um god just be with them and i pray would you help us to not just know your truths but to apply them and live lives of wisdom Thank you so much for being with me today, church. I pray you have a wonderful day and I will see you on a Sunday or a small group very soon. God bless.